So I just wanted to first ask, everybody can hear me, right? All right, perfect. Um, I, of course, wanted to thank the organizers and also say that I think this is a fantastic opportunity you have for not just experts in the field, but for graduate students, and it's a very nice thing you all have going on. So thank you. Um, so today I'd like to talk about some of the uh, geometry that you can get um, and how it can influence if uh, Artinian reductions have WLP, and in particular, um, kind of how looking at the Betty tables of these Artinian reductions might glean um, if that Artinian reduction has the WLP. Um, so first, I uh, just want to standardize some notation that I might be using. Um, so for me, we're going to be working over um, complex projective space. So we're going to have R be our polynomial ring in n plus 1 variables. Um, we're going to take a set of points x in projective n space. Um, and this is going to be a finite set of points. And then what we're going to be doing is actually looking at the ideal of these points. So just to streamline some notation, I'm going to say I sub x is the ideal of these points. Um, and this, of course, lives inside R. Um, we're going to be looking at an Artinian reduction of this. So we're going to say A is the Artinian reduction of an ideal I arising from a point set X. Um, And in case you've never worked with Artinian reductions of point sets, um, what this really amounts to is just throwing in a linear form, and that gives you an Artinian reduction. Um, and then, as usual, we're going to say H is the Hilbert function of our ideal, or maybe it's of the Artinian reduction. And if I'm really, really lazy, I'll say of X and I'm associating to it the Artinian reduction of x. Um, so there's some natural questions, at least for me, about what you could ask relating to sets of points in projective space and their Artinian reductions. Um, so for instance, probably the, the most vague question is, how does the geometry of x uh, influence um, its Artinian reduction having the um, uh, WLP. And what you would might hope is that if you know the geometry of x, then you can say for sure if the Artinian reduction has the weak left shuts property, or maybe even the strong left shuts property. Um, another question you might ask is, uh, can I determine WLP from the number of points I choose? Um, so what I want to say is, uh, is the size of X sufficiently large guarantee either success or uh, failure of WLP. Um, some more questions. Maybe given a configuration of X, uh, can you predict the degree in which uh, WLP either fail, uh, it might fail? So can you predict the degree in which WLP fails? So maybe you can say um, your attenuation reduction doesn't have WLP, but maybe you want even stronger information about exactly where does this map uh, not have full rank. Um, and then maybe the last one 
if you have x and it has, uh, I'm going to say, multiple sub-configurations, so there's lots of substructures um, going on, um, so it has sub-configurations of points, then you might say, then how does this uh, how does this structure influence um, WLP as well. So maybe what you might hope is that there's some sort of, um, if there's a substructure of a certain type, you automatically fail WLP no matter what. That's maybe what you might hope for. Um, so to me, these are all natural questions whenever you're starting to uh, approach WLP um, from the geometric perspective. Um, and so this first question is probably the hardest because it's a very broad question. Uh, the second question is a little weird, but um, I think it's reasonable to ask. Uh, and then these third and fourth are probably what's easiest to investigate because you, it's easy to make configurations of points. And it's easy to impose these kinds of structures on them because you get to choose it. Um, so that's pretty much what I'll be doing today. Um, so any questions, comments, concerns so far? All right. Um, so I just wanted to mention some history. And since a lot of us are already familiar with all of the WLP stuff, I'll just say it very briefly. So um, as we've seen already this week, there's been people approaching these problems. So for instance, configuration of, of points, um, that's all the Japrochi set stuff, maybe. Um, and then you've also got a lot of people working kind of with configurations of points, but they're looking at the, the dual notion with like line arrangements um, and all that kind of stuff. Um, in, a, in a more subtle way, uh, not necessarily with sets of points, um, people have also been looking at these unexpected fill in the blank, unexpected cones, unexpected hypersurfaces, but in some sense that geometry is uh, telling you, do you have WLP? Um, but for me, this really, I think it really um, took a start back in like uh, 2005, 2006 with uh, Miglior Zanello and um, really Miglior um, looking at reduced level sets of points. So looking at the Artinian reductions of these level sets of points and asking, can I determine if uh, their Artinian reductions have WLP? Um, so that's where a lot of this inspiration came from. And so we're trying to refine it and um, trying to say exactly what kind of conditions you need in order to either force a failure or ensure that you do have WLP for the Artinian reductions. Um, all right, so actually I want to use this board. So we'll do a small example just to kind of get us awake in the morning. So I'm going to take a set of points in PN given as uh, the columns of the following matrix. So I've got 1, 0, 0, 0, um, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So this lives inside. Uh, P3, so I've got um, eight points total, so size of x equals eight, um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to say these first seven points, I'm going to call it suggestively x sub f, and then I'm going to call this last guy the point Q. And so it, may, it might not be obvious right now, but I've actually chosen some, some structure to these points. Um, and I just kind of want to say a few things. So um, in particular, X sub F uh, 
all seven of those points lie on um, the variety of x sub 3 because x sub 3 is always 0, so they always vanish there. Um, in fact, uh, if I look at the ideal of uh, x sub f in degree 0, this is 0, and the ideal of x sub f in degree 1 is exactly x sub 3. So what I'm really saying is that all of these points lie on the unique hypersurface determined by x sub 3. Um, some more things I can say. I can say that uh, the uh, x sub q, or sorry, what I want to say is the ideal of x sub q is x1, x2, sorry, x0, x1, x2. Um, and then just for fun, because we like Hilbert functions, uh, if you look at the Hilbert function of all of these points all together, um, you're going to get 1, 4, 7, 8, 8, and so on. Or alternatively, if you want to look at an Artinian reduction of it, you're going to get um, 1, 3, 3, 1. And again, in case you haven't worked with um, ideals of point sets, you can double check that this truly is the Hilbert function of the ideal of these points because what you would, uh, what you need is at some point this Hilbert function is exactly equal to the number of points. Or alternatively, whenever you look at the Hilbert function of the Artinian reduction, uh, uh, you add all these guys together, you should end up with the number of points in your point set, eight. Uh, I of x and throw in a linear form. Oh, I mean, yeah, R mod I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, other questions? And then, just to kind of preview the future, there's one more piece of information about this that I want to, to share, which won't really come into play until later. But um, if I look at the Betty table of R mod I of X or um, of the Artinian reduction, what we're going to get is something that looks like this. So you get one. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Um, three, three, one, three, four, one, and then one, one. So of course I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this probably for quite a bit, but um, this is the Betty table or the Betty diagram for uh, the Artinian reduction or of R mod I sub X. Um, and maybe what I want to point out just to remind myself from later, is this guy in particular. Um, so to get the Artinian reduction, we throw in a, a, a generic linear form. So what we're going to get um, so throwing in a generic linear form L, uh, we're going to get I sub X in degree two uh, is exactly X zero, X three, X one, um, X three, X two, X three, and then X three times L. Um, and if you if you're really bored and you don't like this talk, what you can do is verify that um, A fails WLP from degree two to degree three. It's not too bad of a, of a computation, but um, again, if you're bored, please try it out. 
Um, but uh, sorry, yeah, one to two. I was jumping the gun a little bit. Um, so we chose this uh, set of points very in a special way. Um, in particular, we chose a bunch of points, seven points, that lie on a unique hypersurface, in this case, uh, V of x3. Um, and then we chose one point that is completely off of this, this hypersurface. Um, and so that gives us uh, the following proposition, which uh, some of the, the hypotheses might seem kind of weird, but they're somewhat natural. Um, so we're going to assume the following. So on X of F is a set of points. Um, that lie in Pn, where we're at least in projective three space. Um, and they're going to lie on a hypersurface V sub F. Two, uh, we're going to have F, or that appears in this X sub F, it's going to be a polynomial in our ring R that has degree D but so that the ideal of X and degree D is generated by only F and uh, the ideal of X in any degree less than D is zero. So all this is saying is that the I think the initial degree of I sub X is uh, is D, and this is just ensuring that it, uh, these points um, uh, lie on only the hypersurface determined by F. So it's a unique hypersurface. Three, what we're going to do is choose Q that's not in, that doesn't lie on our hypersurface, uh, and doing this in a way such that uh, I sub X and degree D is equal to zero. This is, I'm pretty sure, implied by this guy not living in the variety of F. Um, but we also want to do it so that uh, whenever we look in degree D plus one, we want uh, this to be spanned by N generators. So with, under these somewhat mild assumptions, really just saying we've got points that lie on a unique hypersurface and we're going to take one point totally off with a special condition right here. Uh, what we can conclude is that the Artinian reduction A does not have WLP and uh, moreover, Uh, fails in degree or from degree uh, D to degree D plus one. So this example fully falls into this proposition um, and the proof actually isn't too bad. Um, probably give this to a really ambitious linear algebra student. Um, maybe they need a little bit of practice with just thinking about polynomials, but other than that, it's, it's not too bad. So I just want to kind of sketch a proof. I guess before I do that, any, any questions, any things I can clear up? Yes, yes. Sorry, I should have uh, written that. Yeah. Other questions? 
No, I want that to be uh, in, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so in particular, whenever we looked at that one point off, um, we basically had all the variables in its ideal except for one of them, and that's going to play a key role. Um, so uh, let's do a sketch. So that loss of generality, um, we can assume this point Q is actually one of the standard coordinates of uh, projective space just through uh, a general uh, change of coordinates. Um, so what this lets us say is that the ideal of x in degree less than or equal to uh, d is equal to 0. And the ideal of q is equal to x1 through xn. Um, yes. We had, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think, I think. <laughs> Questions are good. Um, so the whole point is, uh, basically, whenever we look at the ideal of x in degree d plus 1, um, it's exactly going to be um, f intersect all but one of the variables um, by the choice of q, because it lies off of it. And so what this lets us say is that this ideal um, is exactly x1 f all the way through x n of f. So we've got n generators here. Um, but we're going to throw in a general, uh, yeah, general uh, generic linear form L to get our tending reduction. Um, and so what we now have uh, is this lets us solve for our last variable x sub 0. Um, and if you really want, it's explicitly just something like a sub 0 inverse times the s, all the other x sub i's with uh, i not equal to 0. Um, don't worry too much about notation or whatever. It's really this linear form lets us solve for one of the other variables. And now, whenever we multiply by a general linear form, um, so looking at this, this left shed's property stuff. Uh, no. I think I want okay. this. Yeah. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, so what this lets us say is. Uh, if I look at L, a general linear form, uh, we've got L times F. Doing this multiplication in A is only going to leave us with uh, X of 0 times F. But since we threw in this linear form, 
um, capital L, and we solve for x sub zero, if I multiply by a lowercase l, well, all of these guys are zero in our Artinian reduction. So in fact, if I do uh, L times F, this guy is now also zero. So this is why we really need um, the strong condition, I guess, uh, of this last bullet point. It really makes everything fall in much nicer. Alternatively, if you don't like this, uh, just think about it as linear algebra. Choose a basis um, starting with F and extend it to get polynomials G1 through G sub S in degree D. And then we've got it going to other generators, uh, G1 prime through G S prime. And what we've just shown is that this matrix has a zero column uh, with other stuff here. And so what we've just shown is this map is not injective. Um, and it's also pretty nice that this also isn't surjective, um, just through a, a simple counting argument. Um, so it's not surjective. Since if we do just like a, a naive dimension count, what we've got is that the dimension of our Artinian reduction in degree D is n plus D choose D. Um, and this will always be less than n plus D uh, plus one choose D plus one minus n. So we, we didn't have anything in degree D in our Artinian reduction, um, or sorry, in our ideal. So this Artinian reduction has maximal number of generators. And then we took n generators in degree d plus one. Um, this uh, inequality is always true. Um, if n is at least one, but in our case, we chose n greater than or equal to three. So our map isn't surjective. So this multiplication by a general linear form L is not full rank. So our attenuation reduction does not have WLP. So the whole story is if I take a bunch of points that uniquely determine a hypersurface uh, F, or sorry, they lie on a unique hypersurface F, and we take one point off and look at the Artinian reduction of all of those points, we'll always fail WLP. So questions? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so actually that was, that was going to be my next thing. So um, you can always get a, a unique hypersurface as long as you choose a sufficient number of points. In particular, if you want them to lie on a hypersurface with the degree of f equal to d, you just choose n plus d, choose d minus one points as long as they're general enough. Um, that'll carve out the right hypersurface. Um, but then to ensure that you get this very last condition in bullet point three, um, you have to choose more points on that hypersurface. Um, so actually what you need is just n plus d plus one, choose d plus one minus n plus d, choose d minus n. So this is what you want for the dimension of i sub x in degree d plus one. So if you solve for k, it's 
to get um, the number of extra points needed um, that lie on your hypersurface. And so what you'll get is k is equal to n plus d, uh, choose d plus 1, actually, uh, minus n. And so if you choose um, this many points minus one plus this many points on your uh, hypersurface, you will fall into this, this proposition. Um, that being said, the number of points grows very quickly. So for instance, if you're in, um, if you're in P4 and you wanna lie completely on a degree three uh, guy, you're going to basically need to cho choose like 60 points, um, which is quite a lot. 34 of them are going to determine the hypersurface, and then you need 31 more extra points to make sure that you have everything going right. Um, but what we noticed through just experiments in uh, Macaulay 2 is if we looked at the Betty table of our 10 year reduction, we had that 331 signature or that that tail. Um, so I just do a small little definition, try to Betty table B. Um, so B looks something like, um, we're going to say it looks something like this. Uh, zero, one, minus one to D. So it's got a one in the upper left corner, and that's it for the first column. And then as you go on, um, I want zeros everywhere else. Um, except in degree uh, row D. So we want N and choose two. So N in column two, we want N choose two, and then N minus one and then one. So essentially all I'm trying to say is that if the upper left block of your Betty table is a one in the top left corner with zeros everywhere else except for at row D, where you basically have these binomial coefficients coming about, um, or basically what looks like a, a Kazool complex of some sort. Um, we're going to say uh, then B has an N comma D Kazool tail. If it looks like this. So I, I do want to say that it's possible you have a bunch of stuff after column n, and it's possible that you have a bunch of stuff after row d, but as long as my upper left block of my Betty table looks like this, we're going to say we have uh, an nd visual tail. Um, moreover, it's maximal. if um, there are only zeros for all entries in column J for J greater than N. So we're going to say it's maximal if essentially there's nothing to the right of this. We can still have stuff below it, but nothing to the right. There's nothing to the right, we're going to call it maximum. And so what we notice through just experimentation is that if you have a maximal causal tail, or I think sometimes in the literature, um, this is called a, a linear strand. Um, what we notice is it seems like if you look at the Betty table of a set of points with a maximal causal tail, um, 
you always fail the BLP. But if it's not maximal, then you'll always have WLP. So, yeah. So if I look at any columns to the right of column n, there's nothing. That's what I would want. It's, it's possible that there's other stuff passed here. So um, for instance, maybe I've got like a, a three down here. Um, I'd still have an ND because it'll tail, but it's not maximal. Yeah. So, for example, if we look at um, X of F living in P4 with X of F having um, 34 plus 31 points, and the degree of f equaling three um, and five points, which we're going to say are x sub q lying on a co-dimension three linear space, so carved out by uh, linear polynomials. Um, our Betty table looks like this. Zero, one, two, three, four. Zero, one, two, three. So it's one, and then we've got uh, three, three, one, 44, and 11, 90, 20, and then three. So in this case, uh, there's a four, three, sorry. Yeah, four, three, who's old tail. It's not maximal, since we've got this pesky 20 and three to the right of it. And also, if we look at the Artinian reduction of this, this set of points, um, it has WLP. But if we throw in another linear form just to kind of kill off one of the variables, um, and then look at that as an Artinian algebra, um, our Betty table changes ever so slightly something that looks like so we've already thrown in one we're going to throw in a second linear form and our betty table looks like this so again we've got one uh, we've got three three one and then 15, 27, 12. And if we look at a star, which is A um, modulo another linear form, uh, what we get is A star uh, has a maximal Uh, in this case, three, three, because we'll tail. And A star um, fails WLP. And at least experimentally, it always fails from degree three to degree four, which is exactly still the degree of the hyper uh, polynomial defining the hypersurface. Um, for any, any sort of configuration of points that always follows this kind of pattern where it's a unique hypersurface with a bunch of points on it and then any number of points off of it, it seems to all be determined by um, this like maximal causal tail or this linear strand property. Um, and in particular, if it's, if it's maximal versus non-maximal. Um, 
So I've been tasked with uh, trying to prove this, and it's it's eluded me for a, a bit now. Um, but I imagine there's just some sort of short exact sequence, or um, maybe mimic the proof from before. Um, but it seems like this this is true. Um, yeah, so this one in particular will fail from three to four. So it's still exactly what we expect from the proposition where it's the degree of that polynomial to the next degree. Yeah. Uh, I'd have to think about it a little bit. Um, but that, that's pretty much it. There's lots of examples I could go through, but I want you all to get coffee. Um, so thank you.